Hi, I'm Greg Harris, President and CEO of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We are proud to participate in Giving Tuesday and are extending our involvement throughout the entire week. This global initiative invites individuals to give back and create change in their communities and in the world. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a cultural institution with a global audience. We have an enormous responsibility to our community locally and nationally. We engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll here every day, but also through Rock Hall EDU, our education platform that reached one million students from over 100 countries during this critical time. We need your support to continue this great work. In addition to our massive digital outreach, it was outstanding to see so many fans returning to the museum in Cleveland this year. Together, we celebrated the legends every day at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. For those that were lucky enough to be in attendance at the 2021 induction ceremony, you saw just how powerful live music can be. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame works very hard to keep you close to the music and the legacy of the artists that you love. This week, we're gonna open up our vaults and share with you never before seen performances and stories from the artists themselves. Please enjoy these exclusive programs and make a gift to our 2021 annual fund. Your support this week and every day allows us to continue our mission. Thank you and long live rock. My name is Mandy Smith and I'm the Director of Education here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In July of 2021, Lita Ford came and rocked out in the garage exhibit right upstairs. She played an unforgettable acoustic set for just a small, intimate group of fans. And she brought the house down, let me tell you. While she was here, she made a video for our Rock Hall EDU online platform. It's free to sign up. And if you're a teacher, parent, or guardian, you can go there and find a ton of resources on rock and roll to teach your learners about everything from social studies to math to science to English to music to everything in between. Lita Ford helped us create a video where she talked about falling in love with the guitar, learning how to play it, and then trace her career until she joined the Runaways. I started playing guitar when I was 11 years old. And uh, I just really, really wanted to play guitar. And uh, it was like 1968. And in 1968, girls did not play guitar. And uh, nobody, nobody ever told me, you know, that, oh, no, girls don't do that. And so, you know, I thought I could be as good as anyone. And uh, so my mother and father asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I, I said, I want a guitar. And my mother bought me this Sears special plastic guitar, and you know, I wanted to sound like Black Sabbath. And I said to her, Mom, I mean, I'm only 11 years old, I said, Mom, I don't sound like Black Sabbath on this guitar. And so, she went back to the store and she bought me another guitar that had steel strings. And uh, you know, she thought that would do it. But um, so, I, I, don't, I don't know, I, don't know. I, just, I just had to have the electric sound. That was, that was what I wanted to sound like. And uh, I ended up getting a job about three years later. And I, I played the guitar with the steel strings for three years. And I learned all my favorite riffs by listening to music of my favorite guitar players. And I learned how to tune, I learned the basic scales and the basic chord patterns, and I was able to pick out like, all my favorite Jimmy Page patterns and, and uh, Tony Iommi and Richie Blackmore and, and all my favorite guitar players. And, but by the time I was 13, 14, I got a job working at a hospital and I was able to save up $350 and I went to the local music store and I bought myself a Gibson SG. And I'm like, yeah, man, I got a real guitar now. And so I had nothing to plug it into. Because, I mean, it's electric now. It just, you know, you need two pieces of equipment. And so uh, my father had this Sony reel-to-reel -reel 
It was probably as big as a Vox, you know, a little Vox amp or a twin reverb, but it was a tape player. And it had these two great big reels of tape on it. And I would just plug into the tape player. And, and nobody ever said, you know, don't, this is not an amplifier. Don't use this as an amplifier. So I would just plug into that and I would slap on the delay. I had a delay unit on it. And it sounded like God. It was huge. And, uh, you know, of course, from there, I joined the Runaways. <laughs> Rock and roll is uh, is a very individual thing, I think, and people have different songs that mean more to them, and they feel more from these songs than than other songs. Like you know, you you might put on a, a heavy metal song with your you know your favorite riff, and then someone else might say, eh, you know, I like the piano part on this song better. So I, I think rock and roll is almost like. Um, it's it's just an individual thing that has to touch you in a certain way and what touches one person might not touch another you know but for me growing up i always went for the riffs i was always big riffs and um and that meant more to me than than any other part of the song if the riff was there i was going to hear it and i wanted to see who was playing it what were they playing and how were they playing it? And then somebody might say to me, well, Lita, did you see the singer? And I'm maybe, no, I, I probably didn't. My, but I, I was so fixated on the guitar player. And, uh, and so, you know, it's just growing up and learning and, and um, those were always my favorite, my favorite types of songs with those badass riffs. But that's just me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, when you first pick up a guitar, you kind of imagine what you want to sound like. And sometimes the guitar doesn't, isn't capable of making those kind of sounds. I mean, this was the, c the case for me as a kid. And, uh, my mother and father bought me the acoustic guitar. It had nylon strings. And um, nylon strings is a whole different, it's a whole different animal if you want to play rock and roll or if you want to play um, <laughs> Spanish music. You know, it's just, uh, you have to have the right sort of equipment. And it doesn't have to be really expensive. It just needs to be the right equipment. You know, so... 
I think um, the first thing anyone should really learn on guitar is do you have the right instrument? And if you don't have the right instrument, you know, make it work best you can if you don't have any money to buy another one. And uh, learn how to tune a guitar because a guitar is no good unless you can tune it. And it's almost like driving a car with no gas. You're just not going to get out of the driveway. And so um, maybe invest in a little, a little snark. Do we have a snark here somewhere? A little tuner? I mean, it doesn't have to light up. Yeah. So a little a little snark tuner. I, I'm not sure how much these are, but I know they're super cheap. And they just clip on the headstock of your guitar and you turn it on and it'll it'll light up and tell you if that particular string is in tune. And so um, you know, there's so many different tunings and stuff today, but I think, you know, when you first learn, you need to stick to uh, your basic a440 tuning and you can always mess around with it after that um, you know another thing too on some of these guitars the machine heads on the back of the guitars are really important they have to be able to hold the tuning and sometimes the machine heads are so just cheap that they won't hold the tuning so if you get your your E string tuned up to where you want it and you start to play it, it could possibly slip back down. So, I mean, if you're going to invest in an instrument, make sure you've got some decent machine heads on your guitars. I mean, that's, you know, that's what I would do, I think. Um, you know, you need to make sure the, the neck is straight and not bent. And, you know, like sometimes people keep stuff under their bed for years and years, and, and then all of a sudden they pull it out and they try and play it, and it's all rusted. And the strings are rusted, and and um, and the frets are rusted, and the neck is bowed, and it's just like I can't play guitar. No, you probably can play guitar, but that guitar is just needs a little TLC. So, it, like again, it's like a car. Just make sure it's running properly, and then you know it has gas in the tank, and then you learn how to drive. But uh, so I mean, just your basic stuff. There's chord charts out there where you can buy chord charts just to <laughs> learn your basic chords. And um, everything else just kind of falls into place, I think, if you try and you practice and you really, you really put your heart in it. I think it's pretty an easy thing to learn how to play guitar. Follow your idols. Follow your, uh, your inspirations. And it doesn't matter who who they are. I mean, I, I used to pick violin parts out of a song and learn how to play them on guitar. Or a piano part, which we do live, will play keyboards on guitar. And so anything that makes noise, you can probably duplicate it on a guitar. So it's your basics. <laughs> <laughs>